section, my name is Mrs. Syrett and I am going to be your new teacher on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm so, so excited to meet you all properly on Monday and then in September too. Now thank you so, so much for sending me some of your amazing videos with lots of facts about yourself and your writing. And I thought I would start my video today by telling you a couple of things that I like to do. So I love, love singing. That's one of my favourite things to do. I also love going to the theatre and seeing shows. And I also love telling stories. Um, and I try to tell a story every single day um, when I'm teaching in class. So I'm going to be telling you a story today and it is called Cinderella. Now you may have heard the story of Cinderella before, but this one is a little bit different in places. So I hope that you enjoy it. There once was a young girl whose name was Cinderella. Her mother had died when she was very young and her father married again and his new wife was spiteful and snooty. Her daughters were even worse. They treated Cinderella like a servant. What's little Cinder's doing today then? teased Griselda. She's sweeping away cobwebs like a servant, sneered Grimella. Get on with it then, servant girl, said Griselda. Just then, Cinderella's stepmother appeared, holding a letter. Griselda, Grimella, she cried, I have the most exciting news. The prince is giving a Christmas ball and you're invited. May I go to the ball as well? Cinderella asked, hopefully. You must be joking, her stepmother replied. You belong in the kitchen. Cinderella turned to her father, but he coughed and looked away. He's too scared of stepmother to help me, thought Cinderella. We'll be the most beautiful girls there, chorused the stepsisters. I'm sure the prince will want to marry one of you, said their mother, proudly beaming. All that week, boot makers, dressmakers, jewellers, wig makers and hairdressers streamed through the door. Cinderella tried to make her stepsisters look as pretty as possible. It wasn't easy. Grimella wanted to wear a hat decorated with stuffed birds. Griselda chose a lime green dress with bright yellow spots. Cinderella worked night and day, putting the finishing touches to their outfits. At last they were ready. Cinderella's stepsisters gazed at themselves in the mirror. Don't we look gorgeous, they shrieked. Oh my Tinkerbells, you look wonderful, gasped their mother. The coach is here, let's go. The front door was opened and there was a swish of skirts and a blast of cold air. Then Cinderella was left alone. It doesn't seem too fair, does it? That all of those horrible people could go to the ball and Cinderella was left alone at home. A loud crash in the chimney made Cinderella look up. There, in the fireplace, covered in soot from head to toe, was her godmother. Godmother Felicity, cried Cinderella. Whatever are you doing in our chimney? I missed the door, Felicity replied as she bustled into the room. But 
I haven't seen you since I was ten, said Cinderella. I've been with Sleeping Beauty, my other godchild, said Felicity. But she wouldn't wake up, so it was rather dull. Felicity peered at Cinderella. Have you been crying? she asked. Yes, I wanted to go to the ball, but I'm not allowed. Well, you can wipe those tears away, girlie. Fantastic Felicity is here to help. Now, go and fetch me a large pumpkin. Great, thought Cinderella. My stepsisters are at the ball and I'm picking pumpkins for my crazy godmother. Here you are, Cinderella said a few minutes later. It's the biggest one. Jolly good, Felicity replied. The time has come to tell you a great secret. Your godmother is a fairy. Watch this. Felicity flicked her wand and cried, Abracadabra, Cadabra, Kadeen. There was a twinkle of music and a shower of sparks. In the place of the pumpkin stood a beautiful golden coach. Cinderella gasped, you really can do magic. This is just the beginning, Felicity replied. Now, where can I find your mousetrap? Under the sink, said Cinderella. Felicity peered in. Six mice, one fat rat, all alive. Excellent, open the trap. As the mice came out, Felicity tapped each one with her wand. One by one, the mice were transformed into fine white horses. The rat became a rosy-cheeked coachman with very large whiskers. Now I need six lizards, said Felicity. Hmm, I expect there'll be some behind your watering can. There are, said Cinderella, handing them to her fairy godmother. In a flash, the lizards became footmen. They were dressed in glistening green and looked as if they'd been footmen all their lives. Finally, Felicity touched Cinderella with her wand. A moment later, her rags turned into a dazzling dress of gold and silver. On her feet was a perfect pair of dainty glass slippers. There's just one problem, said Felicity. You must leave before 12. On the last stroke of midnight, my magic will fade. I promise, Cinderella replied, climbing into the coach. Thank you so much, she called as the horses swept her away. When Cinderella entered the ballroom, everyone fell silent. Then a whisper went around the room. Who's that beautiful girl? The ladies wondered. A voice next to Cinderella almost made her jump. It was the prince. May I have this dance? He asked. Cinderella and the prince twirled across the floor. She's so graceful, said the other ladies. And look at her dress. Have you ever seen anything so delicate? The prince is only being polite, snapped Grimella. He'd much rather dance with me. I think they're jealous. As the prince whirled Cinderella around the room, she caught sight of the clock. It was almost midnight. Oh no, she said, I must go. And she ran away across the dance floor. The prince raced after her. Come back, he called. But Cinderella had disappeared into the darkness. The prince turned back to the palace with a sigh. Then something on the steps caught his eye. Do you know what it is? Her glass slipper, he cried.
Cinderella ran home as fast as she could. She arrived just before her stepsisters. Morning. The next morning, the entire street was woken by the shout of a town crier, who was followed by a messenger. Hear ye, hear ye, by the order of his royal highness, the prince, every girl in the kingdom must try on this glass slipper. The prince will marry its true owner. Cinderella's stepmother flung open the door and grabbed the messenger. One of my girls will fit this shoe, she said proudly, and then we'll be royalty. Do you think it's going to fit them? Griselda couldn't even fit her big toe in the shoe. She pushed until her foot was bright red. Give it here, shouted Grimella, ramming half her foot in the shoe. It got stuck. You useless child, cried her mother. She wrenched the slipper off Grimella's foot and flung it at the messenger. Off you go then, she snapped. Excuse me, ma'am, the messenger said. I've strict orders that every young lady is to try it on the shoe. And he looked at Cinderella. She's just a servant, said Grimella. Cinderella's father coughed. <clears throat> Actually, Cinderella has every right to try on the slipper, he said bravely. She walked over to the messenger and slipped on the shoe. It was a perfect fit. No, shrieked Griselda and Grimella. She can't be a princess, shouted their mother. I won't allow it. With one swift movement, the messenger swept off his hat and cloak. Everyone in the room gasped. It was the prince! He knelt in front of Cinderella. I've been searching everywhere for you, he said. Will you marry me? Oh yes, she replied. At that moment there was a puff of smoke and Felicity flew into the room. Time for a little more magic, she declared. Felicity flicked her wand and gave Cinderella a dress even more beautiful than the one she had worn to the ball. My princess, said the prince, and swept Cinderella off to his palace. They were married the very next day and lived happily ever after. But Griselda and Grimella were not so happy. Their mother, mother never stopped scolding them. It's all your fault for having such big feet, she told them. The end. I hope that you enjoyed my story and I am really looking forward to meeting you all on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend reception. Bye!